Chris, John Hudson comes in to keep us updated on everything in the latest and greatest UFO news. John, welcome back. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for having me. And, and thank you, everyone, for sticking around, especially considering how in I can't imagine how jam packed your brains are right now with all that wonderful information. So thanks for sticking around. Oh, my gosh. Listening to Science Bob and Mr. Homer Hickam talk about space and rocketry and so everything. relaxing. I mean, there are very few shows that I get to just sit back and chill and smile because I'm learning something. Mm -hmm. I got schooled tonight, man. That's a good thing. I got schooled. And I loved every minute of it. Yeah, we should try to make that happen more often. That's a good thing. And you know what was really cool about it? Is listening to Mr. Hickam actually admit that he has seen UFOs. That was um that was interesting. That was that was really, I really, really think, interesting. I didn't yeah. think he'd eat. I didn't, I didn't either. I really didn't either. I actually I mean I mean that keep me to go back and I, I want to go back and listen to that because it's like oh, oh like I I didn't even catch it the first time and it was like wait a second. Um, but you know the thing is is that I think one I think obviously everything that's been going on is obviously making it easier. But I also think that this is one of the times where we start to see why the parsing of the language between um, observables and contact and observables and entities is actually a big deal because when that nuance exists it frees people like him to be able to safely say he's seen a ufo without getting immediately pulled down into the more uncomfortable conversation which really should be the obvious follow-up conversation but because of our wacky world isn't at this point oh you know what you're so right. And, and, you know, we asked him some pointed questions and, you know, about NASA and about, you know, whether or not we deserve to go into space and colonize someplace else. He, you could tell he was genuine, but could you imagine, you know, and I just want to say this before we get going here. Could you imagine growing up in a, in that time, in that era in the fifties, where your mother knows you're playing with gunpowder and rockets and gasoline and and everything and and the only words of advice that she has for you is don't blow yourself up which is the latest title of his new book i mean in today's world Honestly, that man, doesn't that's, happen that's, that's the that's police the are called. yeah i know it's it's it's, it's hard for me not to my cuz that's the world i grew up in you know and, uh, and so, I mean, I used to, my, I mean, God, I think of some of the stuff that I, uh, man, <laughs> it's, t- it's, t- you start to, you start sitting down one night, like, you know, late at night and start writing down statute of limitations on things at some point. You're like, wait a second, you know, cause you start realizing that there are, there's so many things that you got away with as kids that you, just, you couldn't get away with these days. Now the, the truth of the matter is, is that people get hung up on this idea that those extreme examples were the only ways we could have learned those lessons. That's not true. There's 16 million different ways to learn a lesson. So, you know, just because, you know, more modern kids aren't necessarily getting that same, you know, extreme, um, you know, uh, crocodile Dundee style, um, you know, um, Wild West sort of approach to it. um, You know, there's still lots of opportunities to learn those lessons. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. All right. Let's get going here because we got a lot of UFO news to cover. And right off the bat, Avi Loeb basically saying that we're going to be rewriting history books and textbooks very, very soon. Yeah. So, so first off, it's it's a it's a fun article because one is is it's not just Avi. It's it's also retired Rear Admiral um, Tim. Um, uh, oh, you know, I need to start beginning better practicing pronunciation. Goliat. Uh, I'm hoping, um, Doctor. Um, and, uh, and so, um, you know, it, it is a listed, it is listed as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, you know, opinion contributors, but it was published in the Hill and the Hill is not a, you know, somewhere where you typically expect to be reading, you know, flights, you know, flights of flights of fancy sort of stuff. Right. So I was, I was, I was impressed where it was published as I was the article, but when you read the article, it's good because it, it, it one, it sets a very pragmatic tone to everything. But it doesn't try to pull any punches either. It, it makes stuff very clear to say things like, look, you know, 
if what we are seeing is as we are seeing it, and if what we believe is happening is happening, then there is a is there is an entire aspect to physics that we don't get. Mm-hmm. Now that doesn't mean that you have to rip out the physics we have. That's not usually how science works. It usually is a, is additive. But there's obviously something we're missing, <laughs> right? You know, and um, and so you know, it's a, it was a it was a really good. It was also a good opportunity, I think, for a more um, a more nuanced um, uh, kind of nudge at the science community in general. Um, you know, just specifically talking about the dogmatic aspects of it, and and you know the the, the ways that they, it hasn't done itself any favors um, in how it's approached this or or many other topics. Um, and um, you know, it's um, you know, someone said it really well the other day, and I can't remember who it was. They said, you know, it was something along the lines of, you know, uh, science used to be focused on the outliers, and and now science actively avoids the outliers and you know and i i don't i don't believe that to be wildly true but if it was wildly true oh boy man the trouble we'd be in i can't even possibly put words to it you know um and so yeah so it's a really good article you know i'm not supposed to be remain unbiased but i highly recommend everyone check it out it's it's a good article to read and uh, it's nice to see two gentlemen like that working on a similar article but yeah but it, it definitely touches on a lot of interesting topics all right, the final wording of the amendment has been published. Woohoo! Party. Um, yeah. So, um, uh, you know, no, um, <laughs> no, uh, no sudden. Uh, well, the truth of the matter is, is that anytime these these kind of publishing dates happen, you do actually have to read to, through them with a tooth, fine tooth comb because people try to sneak stuff in and people try to sneakily remove things. And so you, so, we, so, you know, it, it doesn't mean that no one's got any work to do, but, um, but it does mean that we finally got to a point where there is a, a single language set that everyone agrees with. It's all the reconciliation is done. This is what the president will receive on his desk. This is what the president will hopefully and, and almost certainly sign. And so this is, you know, this is, this is, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's another, it's another step in the process. Um, but, you know, but what I hope everyone's doing is I'm hoping everyone's, I mean, I, you know, I hate to sound like a teacher, but like, I hope everyone's using this as an opportunity to kind of get a little bit of a window into what the legislative process is for doing things like this, because we're going to have to do this again. We're going to have to do this several times. We're going to have to get a lot better at it. And we need to get better at it than anyone else is. And so this is a good learning opportunity for all of us. Do we have any dates or or rumors of when this bill is going to be signed by the president? Um, it, it uh, honestly, what once once reconciliation has occurred, and once you've published unified language like this, where like everyone has publicly said we're we're in support of it. The truth of the matter is, is that him signing it is somewhat of a, of a, of a, of a eyes, you know, dotting eyes sort of a thing. Right. So, um, so my guess is, is that it'll just get delayed as long as, um, is needed for some, um, political event. Um, you know, they usually like to sign things like this, you know, uh, tied to some holiday or tied to some, you know, announcement or some new package they're releasing or some, something like that. So, you know, this is a good chance that it'll, it'll be delayed because it's, it's tied to some other marketing effort, but, um, but, uh, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's reason to be confident. There's, believe it or not, there's actually reason to be confident that, that we could actually see this signed by Christmas. I'm, I'm not, I'm not keeping my hopes up but but there's a there's a chance all right this is the one i'm really looking forward to getting into is senator christian gillibrand really really still pushing the idea of the threat narrative of uap and very proud of her bill that she helped put together I mean, this is good stuff here is, as uh, she continues to build support for this subject. No, this, this is, this is, um, this is what, so in a, how do I put this? In a really contrite, manipulated, um, puppeteered world, right? This is exactly what you want to see. <laughs> um, you you want to see someone like her suddenly get wind under her wings 
right, on something that we hope she really cared about. And I do. I really hope she did. But I don't know that for sure. I have no idea what she really thinks. Right. And so so she basically she tried something. She floated at something. Right. She got a lot of attention for it. She got Rubio uh, on board with her. Right. Now she's tied to a Rubio bill. Right. Um, you know, so this has been lots of good stuff for her. What you hope happens then is they double down. The problem is, is that when you have something as volatile as this, sometimes that doubling down doesn't happen and they, they still take a step back. That's not what we're seeing. We're seeing her doubling down and she's doubling down with a grin and a bit of a swagger, right? Which is a really good thing. It shows that she's getting confident and she's she's getting more sure of herself and that she understands that she has a real pony in the game now that she can she can ride for a while. That is some good stuff, man. That is some good stuff. Who's starting to support? Who are we starting to see more politicians come on board with this saying, yeah. You know, I need to learn more about this, or is it the public in general? Um, I, 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 I think it's, I think it's, it's growing. It's, it's growing because the, the thing is, is it, is it, you know, uh, congressional uh, members they, they're always going to work harder for things that they personally give a damn about, right? That it's hard. It's hard to have. It's hard to manage an ego like that and not require everything to have a piece of you in it, right? So, so anytime they find something that they can personally get excited about and that their constituents want, it's like party time, right? Like, like they 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 just go ballistic, right? Because it doesn't get to happen to them very often, right? A lot of times, the stuff they have to champion it sucks. And so I think for, for this, I think that we are going to start seeing more and more and more come out, uh, people come out in support of it because one, it's a bipartisan bill that you can actually get energized about, right? You can actually get like passionate about something that is not bipartisan. I honestly, I can't tell you, I can't tell you in my lifetime, the last time that happened. Well, it's interesting to see how this is going to play out, John, because we know the bill is passed. We know it's going to become legislation. We know that it's going to be, you know, very highly scrutinized, not only by non-supporters in the political realm, but but United States citizens coming around. It's going to be interesting to see how the rest of the world comes out, you know. And and I like this tweet that you that you posted here of of Senator Gillibrand, where, where she tweeted out, if we want to defend our airspace and maintain our strategic edge, we need to investigate unidentified aerial phenomena and determine if they belong to a foreign entity or something else altogether. It's a national security issue and we cannot bury our heads in the sand. Uh, but, you know, in, in saying that, I like what she said because she's, she's you know, defending her own bill. Mm -hmm. But where I, But where I'm a little concerned is, it seems like we've taken this backward step on going back into the threat narrative no, that no, it's no. Russia, it's China. So, 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 yeah, okay, yeah. So, totally see that. Um, but I think the better way to look at this, at least in my opinion, is is that that each individual person is on their own story arc, and everyone has to go through the threat narrative phase. It's like going through your 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 preteens right and essentially because she is somewhat newer to this than than other people are she's bumbled into the fact that if she really wants to get any kind of movement done um in, in congress that there has to be a defense aspect to it and so she's being schooled she's being educated by others who are now saying look what we told you was correct right so now now she's getting support in believing what she's been told that essentially this is this is the way to do it right and um and so yeah so i mean you know i mean you know i'm you know i tend to be a little bit cautious but you know i i think um you know i think everything's kind of on the right track awesome mr yeah. john always a pleasure to have you here for the unbiased ufo report a great job as per usual 